since Latin isn't taught in many schools anymore, why do we still need it? Well, it crops up in our everyday speech. And in case you think I'm making that up, try these for size. Vice versa, pro rata, and even etc. Medical practitioners have a name for every body part, illness and disease, and lawyers use it too. So I hear you ask, what has this to do with wildlife recording and Merseyside Biobank? Well, it turns out we use it too. To help unravel some of the myths of scientific language, I've been talking to Tim Burroughs from Lancashire Wildlife Trust. Hi. Hi. So, what's with all this Latin then? Why can't we just use the common names? Isn't it a bit old-fashioned? That's all well and good until you get national, local or even international variations in the words. Okay, so let's... You're a local lass. What would you call this? Um, well, I'm from the Midlands, so I suppose I'd call it furs or gorse. Exactly. Two different names already. And in different parts of the country, it may be known as win or furs, and maybe spelled differently. It's much easier if we just have one universal name all around the world. In this case, you look Europeus. I see, but Latin's hard to pronounce and I don't understand what it means. It's a bit like having to understand the car engine before getting behind the wheel and driving. But once you get the habit of it, it can be kind of fun. I see. Well, one of my favourite birds is the nightjar, whose Latin name is Capromulgus Europeus. Why is it called that? OK, well, Europeus is the region, but the interesting bit is the capri, which means goat, and the mulgus, which means sucker. If you put them together, you get goat sucker. And people used to think this is how they got their food. Wow. The theory comes from they live in low-nutrient areas, and so the goat's milk yield was very, very small, and this was blamed on the birds. Wow, that really is interesting. It sounds like you can have a lot of fun with Latin, and of course it's more useful to have a universally understood language. Let's have a closer look at some more scientific names. There's the magpie, picker picker, which means to be smothered in pitch. There's the wren, troglodyte, troglodyte, that means cave dweller. And also there's the uh, cephalopod, that's the family name for the uh, octopus and squid. Kef means head, pod means foot. So even if you don't understand the language, it makes it easier to remember some of the words and more helpful to name Latin species accurately. There are a couple of rules when using scientific language. Firstly, the first word must always have a capital letter and the second word must be lower cased. And when writing it, it must be in italics if typing or underlined if handwritten. A few final words. Remember, when you're submitting records to us, it's best to have scientific names if possible. And don't forget to have fun when finding out new ones and learning what they mean.